Hello students, straight back again. Today you've got practice problems for section 10.2. Section 10.2 we were working with change mainly from changing from grams to moles of elements or moles to grams. So between moles and mass of elements. Number six, we have six, six point eight nine moles of antinomy, that's SB, and we want to change that into mass, which means grams. So we start at 6.89 moles SB. Looking at your periodic table, uh, molar mass of antinomy is 121.75 grams of antinomy in every mole of antinomy. Moles divide out moles. We multiply the 6.89 times 121.75. We're going to keep three sig figs here. Just made three sig figs of what we started with. And multiply those, we get 839 grams of antinomy. Make sure we always put units and describe what it is. This has, in this case, it's antinomy. Now, again, as we're doing these, you should have already done these. Now you should be checking them, correcting any mistakes you make. Make sure you understand what you're doing. If you shortcut it, just copy down what I'm doing, you're not going to learn much. You're probably going to do really poorly on a quiz. In this case, we've got... 0.700 moles of selenium, and we want to change that into grams. So 0 0.0700 moles of selenium is SE, and every mole of selenium has a mass of 78.96 grams. Moles of selenium, divide out moles of selenium. We multiply those two things together. Here again we got three sig figs. So 5.53 grams of selenium. This time we've got a mass of 223 grams of sulfur. And we want to change that into moles. So we start with the 223 grams of sulfur. This time we want moles. I'm going to put that on the top. One mole of sulfur is 32.06 from the periodic table again. Going up our molar masses, 32.06 grams of sulfur. Grams of sulfur, divide up grams of sulfur. This time I want to divide the two numbers, 223 divided by 32.06. Remember, if it's on the bottom, we always divide. And that results in two, once again, three sig figs, 6.96, this time moles of sulfur. Number nine, we've got 50 grams of helium, and we want to know how many moles. So grams to moles this time. So we start with 50.0 grams of helium. We know a mole of helium. Using your periodic table, we find it to be 4.0026 grams of helium in every mole. Grams of helium, divide out grams of helium. Now we do the 50 divided by the 4. And we end up with 
0.5 and 3 sig figs moles of helium. Number 10. Little extra work on this one. This time we've got, we want to know, we got a nickel coin and we want to know how many moles are in it. So a nickel coin, two moles of nickel. And they tell us that nickel coin has a mass of 5.0 grams. So that's where we're going to start. We got a 5.00 gram coin. I'm going to leave out the word nickel because I could get confusing. We've got nickel coins and we got the element nickel. And then it says it's 25% nickel. That means we have 25 grams of nickel for every 100 grams of coin. Grams of coin, divide up grams of coin. And we don't want grams of nickel left. We want moles of nickel. So now we know one mole of nickel using our periodic table is 58.71 grams of nickel. Grams of nickel, divide up grams of nickel. Now this time we want to take 5 times 25 divided by 100 divided by 58.71. And do 3 sig figs again. Look here, 3 sig figs, 3 sig figs, 3 sig figs. So we're going to keep 3 sig figs. At 0 0.00213. Remember, all these beginning zeros are not significant. We don't. First thing significant is the two. So 0 0.00213 moles of nickel in this coin. Now, number eleven. We switch just a little bit here. Here we're going from, in the next few problems, we'll be going from grams to atoms. So we got 2.0 grams of platinum, and we want to change that to atoms. So it just requires another step. So we start with 2.00 grams of platinum. If we're trying to go from mass to atoms, we first have to get it to moles first. So we do grams to moles and moles to atoms. From a periodic table we can find that we have 195.09 grams of platinum every mole of platinum. Grams divide up grams and a mole of platinum we can get the atoms now is 6.022 times, I ran out of room there so I'm just going to bring it down here, 10 to the 23rd atoms of platinum. It's supposed to be up here. And uh, atoms of platinum, oh, atoms of platinum don't divide out. Rid of that. The moles of platinum divide out with the moles of platinum. And now we'd want to take the 2.00 times, oh, not times, divided by the 195.09, then times the 6.022. Or you could have took times 6.022. Then divide them by 195. And we get all that done. We got 0 0.0617. And we still got that times 10 to the 23rd. Yeah, we only want 3 sig figs. And 2.00, 3 sig figs, that's a 617. 
but we want to make sure it's in scientific notation. We don't want this kind of a thing. We always get our decimal point in the right place, so we're going to move that over twice, 6.17. So that means we need to move it twice. We need to change our exponent twice. We made this number bigger. We're going to make our exponent smaller. So times 10 to 21st atoms of platinum. So in that little sample of 2 grams of platinum, we have 6.17 times 10 to 21st atom of platinum. Lots of atoms. Number 12, we got a metric ton, or 1.00 times 10 to 6 grams. That's what a metric ton is. It's a million grams. And we want to change that to atoms. So, much like the preceding problem, we start with 1.00 times 10 to the 6 grams of sulfur. And we can change from grams of sulfur into moles of sulfur. And one mole is 32.06 grams. Grams divide up grams. And we can change from one mole of sulfur of sulfur into 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. Moles divide out moles. Now we got one divided by 32.06 times 6.022. Oh, again, you could have done the 1 times 6.022, which would just be 6.022, then divide by the 32.06. Doesn't matter which order you multiply and divide in, as long as you do the appropriate operation. And after getting all that done, we've got 0 0.188. Once again, we're looking at three sig figs. And we're going to have times 10 to the, this time we've got a 10 to the 6th over here, a 10 to the 23rd there. So we need to add those together to get 29. Now we need to do our adjustment because we aren't in scientific notation. I'll always bring our answer into scientific notation. So we're going to change it to 1.88. Moving our decimal one spot, making this number bigger. We make the other one one smaller. Bring it down to a 28. And that would be atoms of sulfur in that metric ton. Number 13. How many grams of mercury are in one point? One nine times ten to twenty third atoms. So we're trying to take this number and change it into grams. So one point one nine times ten to the twenty third atoms of mercury. Uh, atoms of mercury. Yeah, there would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of mercury and one mole of mercury. Atoms divide out atoms. You can also, you got times 10 to 23rd and a times 10 to 23rd. Might as well just go ahead and divide those out. And then I'm running out of room here, so don't have room to finish it out there, so I'll extend it down here. So this is actually up on the next line above. And one mole of mercury is from our periodic table. One mole of mercury is 200.59 grams of mercury. Mole, divide out mole. 
So this time we want to do the 1.19. We need to divide by the 6.022 and multiply by the 200. And we get all that done. We have 39.7, keeping our three sig figs, grams of mercury. Number 10. Got atoms of iodine, and we're trying to find mass in grams, so we're trying to change that to grams. We had a two step problem. First, here we're going to go from atoms to moles, and we'll go from moles to grams. So we start with three, three point zero one times ten to the nineteenth atoms of iodine. And we know they're 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iodine and one mole of iodine. And continuing on up there, bring it down here, get enough room. Yeah, we can cancel the atoms of iodine. And every mole of iodine, we have 126.90 grams of iodine from a periodic table. Now the moles divide that to moles. We can also reduce down our exponents. We got 10 to 19th on top and a 10 to the 23rd on the bottom. We're going to subtract those exponents, and that's going to leave us a negative 4. Now take care of our coefficients. That to 3. We want to divide by the 6.022 and then multiply by the 126. Or Again, we can do it the other way around, but as we get all that done, we get 63.4, and we keep the times now 10 to the negative 4th. A little bit of adjustment here to change it to 6.34, moving our decimal back one spot, making this number smaller. We want to make the exponent a little bigger by 1, and we get 6.34 times 10 to the negative 3rd grams of iodine. Now number 15. Fifteen, a little bit tougher problem. Fifteen, our last one for this little part, a little bit longer assignment than some of them. This time we're trying to go from one kilogram of water, and then it wants to know how many lead ions we have. And they tell us it's 15 parts per billion by mass. So we're going to start with that 1.00 kilograms of water. Yeah, we don't want kilograms of water, we want grams of water. So first, I'm going to switch it out. We know one kilogram of water would be a thousand grams, which I'm going to express as 10 to the third grams of water. Kilogram water cancels out kilogram of water. And you just keep sliding along here. Yeah, we can go from our 15 parts per billion up here tells us that there's 15 grams of lead for every billion, which would be 10 to the ninth grams of water. That's what parts per billion by mass means. The grams of water divides out the grams of water. And we don't want grams of lead, we want 
moles of lead. Yeah. To any deep, reasonable number of significant digits, a uh, molar mass of a lead ion is going to be the same as the molar mass of lead atoms because you're just losing electrons and it takes some 2,000 electrons to get up even the mass of a proton. So for our purpose, it doesn't really change anything. Yeah, no, so we want to go from... We're going to get to a mole of lead ions. This is using the periodic table, 207.2 grams of lead. Grams of lead, divide up grams of lead up there. And then we can go from that mole of lead ions. And a mole of lead ions would be 6.022, Avogadro's number again, times 10 to the 23rd lead Ions. Mole lead ions cancels out mole lead ions. Yeah, we got a 10 to the third on top. We got another 10 to the 23rd on top. If we combine those two together here and here, we're going to get a 10 to the 26th. Then there's a 10 to the 9th on the bottom. When you subtract that off, it would give us a 17. So we're looking at something times 10 to the 17th lead ions. There we go through 1. That can work with there. Times 15 times the 6, divide by the 207, and we're going to get 0 0.436. One more time, I started this out with three sig figs. We want not 4.436, but 4.36. Moved our decimal one spot, making this bigger. Other one becomes smaller. So we have 4.36 times 10 to the 16th lead ions, and that completes our practice problems for section 10.2. That's all for now.